happy to call upon my friend uh, Mr. H.P. Srivastava, again a very senior corporate professional. He is the chairman of the Deccan Chamber of uh, Industries also uh, to take on the proceedings. Thank you. Uh, Professor Ganeshan and his team, the eminent speakers and dear students, a very good afternoon to all of you. Before I touch the topic, the challenges and opportunity, I feel the biggest challenge for me is the being the second last speaker of the day and addressing a session post-lunch. Very, very difficult to hold the attention of the people at this point of time. Okay? But I will try my level best to see that I don't engage you in topics where your eyes automatically get closed. I would like to do that, that it is not getting that much. Fine. Now let me ask you a question, basically. What do you feel this international trade is? What is this international trade? Professor Ganeshan rightly touched it. I say the buyer and seller, when both are located in the same country, you are doing the dealing in the same currency, you are selling within India, within the territorial water, within the territorial jurisdiction of this country, or any country for that reason. But when the buyer is in one country, seller is in another country, the currencies are different, a common currency, then it's an international trade. The currency and the customs, the two, two elements which come into picture. That's the macro level, a very simple saying that this is the difference which is seen. And as Professor Ganeshan rightly said, that no country can be self-sufficient. Every country is unique. There could be a lot of opportunities lying here. In other countries, some lot of opportunities lying there. And that each country has to complement. As, as we are not producing oil, we have to import oil. That is for sure we have to do. We need foreign currency for importing the oil. That's the requirement. If the, if the vehicles have to run on the road, the fuel is required and fuel has to be imported. And you need foreign currency on that. Now, before I move on to the current challenges, let me take you a bit of, through a bit of history. India got freedom, 1947. What happened at that point of time? We came out of the slavery of British rule. And when you look at the basic point, it was an MNC, East India Company, because of which all this thing started. The British rule started, East India Company, it was an MNC. So when the framers of the constitution and the people who were part of the freedom movement, when they started building India, they looked at a closed model of economy. Where we thought, no, government will invest into the industry, PSU will be there, we will create the employment, and rather than earning foreign exchange, what we will do? We will not allow so much of foreign exchange to be spent. So control spending of foreign exchange. Don't allow import easily. So duties were very high. 300% of import duty. What we are looking today is nothing. It's all done rationalized. What my friend Mr. Kunal Sarma has said, the custom duties are all rationalized today globally. 300% duty. And if you are traveling abroad, you will get only $15 per day to stay in a hotel. Now, what kind of hotel you can stay? You are representing a big Indian company. What kind of hotel you can stay in that money? You all have not seen this because you are all, most of you, they are all students. You are all basically 90s and this era where foreign exchange is not a question. You go, you can, every year you can, uh, you are allowed whatever foreign exchange up to, up to 200,000, you can easily remit for anything to buy a property outside. You are allowed. You are going outside, you are not struggling for foreign exchange. But there was a day earlier when for going abroad, foreign exchange was rationed. You would not get five days, hundred dollar, that much stay you can have. So that's how it was built. Then 1970s, for all of you to know what you feel was our global share in 1970, and what was the share of China in, say, 1970 or in 70s? Any guess? About 1%. Both of us were about 1%, below 1%, India and China. 
And today, what is the global share of India? 1.7%. And what is the share of China? 12.6% in the global trade. So we all started at that time, but that economy was also struggling to come in terms. They opened up earlier, we opened up later. Okay. So that's how the economy started building up. And then came a situation in 1991 when India had to physically place the gold. Two aircraft full of gold were sent from here to Britain as physical pledging because we had only five to six days of foreign exchange reserve and our credibility in the global market was going to come under fire. That is the time in 1992 or thereabout that the government really took note of this that yes, we are going to open up, we are going to look at earning the foreign exchange rather than saying that no, we will not allow to spend the foreign exchange. The thinking changed and it changed at the right time because parallelly there was another movement going on, general agreement on trade and treaty, which later on became World Trade Organization, where 140 odd countries were gathering together that, yes, this is how we are going to get do business, where tariff and non-tariff barriers will be demolished. So that was the right time to start this, about 92, 93. And then came a blip in 96, 97, the Thailand crisis, and then the things were very good, I would say the heydays in 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5, it was really, really good. Basically, the global trade, basically the G, uh, global GDP was growing at around 5% and global trade was around 10%, double of that. And then came a blip of 2008. And then again, we have re-emerged from there. Now the question comes, having said that, where are we today? For the last five years or so, our global trade, the India's total trade, has been tottering around 300 billion to between 300 to 350 billion. And if you look at the first seven to eight months of 2015, we have done only about 110 to 120 billion. It means it may slide down below 300 billion this year. That is the that is the thing which we are staring at, but yes, we have been saved because of the global prices going down, because of the imports coming down, we have been saved from the pain which we could have had now if the global prices would have not come down to that level. So that is where the main challenge is lying, that how do we, how do we increase India's share in the global market? The last foreign trade policy, which was announced in 2015-16, they have put a target of 900 billion by 1920. But to achieve that, we have to basically do a lot of things if you really want to get there, even 900 billion. And I say that despite China facing the slowdown in their economy, do you know what was the trade surplus which they had in nine months of time from April to December? 795 billion is a trade surplus despite a slowdown. We are having a foreign reserve of 340, 350 billion. They had one point of time 4 trillion, which had come down to 3.4 trillion now. These two are the whole world is looking at India and China because. We are the biggest market India and China put together, are the largest market of the world, and no country can afford to ignore the two of the largest market of the world. And then what, what we are supposed to do, basically? What are all the strengths which we have? I think during the previous session, the immigrant speakers have rightly point out, pointed out that we have got a young working force, the age is about 29 years, but the question is to make them employable. If you don't make them employable, this resource will be wasted. And the second very important thing is, basically, that when you have this resource, and you look at the other European country, which are aging out, and it is estimated in the next four to five years, most of the European countries will have the working population and the patient are 50-50. It means 50% population of most of the European countries will be pensioners. 
So a lot of opportunities will be flowing in that scenario where this population can really become a potent tool in this country to take that opportunity, but you have to make them employable by giving them right kind of skills. That is the biggest opportunity which we have. And we are the biggest market, another very, very important opportunity because no country can afford to ignore us. We are the largest market of the world. Now the constraint typically, what Mr. Sarma rightly pointed out, the infrastructure, the road, port, these things are biggest bottleneck. He has touched upon basically that what road. I am telling you to move a product from your factory gate to the port is one of the biggest challenge today. How many kilometers it is from here to Navsheva port? 160 kilometers. But last month, from the gate of the port to the last truck, what could have been the distance according to you? The last truck and the, and the gate of the port. 27 kilometers. The last truck and the gate. The congestion. When we are saying that the exports are going down, we are not doing well on the exports. And this is the kind of infrastructure you have that your truck, the last truck and the port gate is 27 kilometers. It takes five to six days to wait there in the line to get into the port. Lot many vessels are bypassing because yes, such a huge congestion is there. We have to address this aspect. The infrastructure is the biggest bottleneck which must be addressed. You cannot tell our, uh, we cannot tell our customer, no, 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 we couldn't move the container because you see it was waiting for six days and it could not get in and the, by the time vessel had moved out. You can't say that. Nobody will buy that excuse. He has got other supplier to buy it from. Why should it buy it from you? So very important thing, as you said, right, that infrastructure. Second, taxation reform. I agree with Mr. Sarma, but on a different context. The taxation are required, and taxation regime has been streamlined to a large extent. The problem is multiplicity of taxes and compliance. Now you have sales tax, you have to do all return, audit sales tax. You have central excise, central excise, audit return compliance. You have local tax, audit return compliance. You have income tax, audit return compliance. So every tax, multiplicity of tax and multiplicity of compliance. That increases the transaction cost. The transaction cost is very high. If you look at the transaction cost here in India compared to any other country, we are having close to 6% of transaction cost in all these things. Paperwork, 6%. When return on capital, you are aiming at 6%. People are struggling to get. You say 6% is the transaction cost. Very high. So multiplicity of taxes, the biggest problem, it could be addressed to a certain extent when the GST comes, because with GST, the, your uh, sales tax, your central excise tax, service tax, and the local body tax hopefully will be merged, and there will be one tax, one state level GST, one central GST to comply with, the life should become easier. But there are still many slips between the cup and lip, the GST bill is yet to be passed, and is still struggling. So GST, yes, is desired, and that should reduce the transaction cost to a large extent. Okay? And the last I say, basically the labor reform. Labor reform in the sense, if you have basically port, strike and port, strike on export-oriented unit, all these places which are contributing to the foreign exchange, the strike and this thing should be banned. They should be also treated like essential services. You cannot strike easily on essential services. All these who are contributing to the foreign exchange and export, make them essential services. You can't afford a strike in the port. So in nutshell, basically, the time is only, I think, 15 minutes. I have almost done 15 minutes, so I won't be stretching it further. But I would be sitting here to answer any of the questions from any of you on the challenges and the opportunity, and I would be too pleased to answer. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to speak here. Thanks a lot.